Hi guys, Barnaby for Spurred On. It's Tuesday, the morning after the night before, and the title dream is over. I said it in my match review last night. It's still over, nothing's changed overnight. Once again, I want to congratulate Leicester City. They deserved it. Any team who puts together a run of five 1-0 wins on the spin at the business end of the season when you're top of the league and the pressure's on you, unbelievable. Some great players, but a great team ethic. Great bonding, exactly what Spurs have got, but they just got ahead of us too early and we couldn't claw it back. Fair play to them. This is uh, my regular five things I felt we learned. And of course, it's five things I felt we learned from the Chelsea game last night. Uh, you know, I know a lot of people are very negative this morning, but I've also seen on social media a lot of pride as well. And I think that's exactly the way we need to look at this. How far we've come, how good a season we've had, how we stood up to Chelsea last night and that's the first thing I want to talk about that I felt we learned last night. We've been talked about before as a soft touch. Alex Ferguson famously said it's Tottenham. Gary Neville always talked about how we used to be a soft touch. Jamie Carragher as well. You, you hear all these people, all these pundits talking about it. Well I can tell you now after last night they are the same pundits that are now saying that we lost our heads, that we went too far, that we were too aggressive. I disagree. I don't think we did lose our heads and I think it all stems from Rizzo Pochettino up. I really do. I think he has instilled in us the fact that you need to fight to win. He talks about fight all the time. You need to fight to win. And when you're playing a juggernaut like Chelsea, I know they're not at the top of the league, but let's face it, in terms of stature, in terms of what they've won, in terms of their physicality, in terms of how they know to win big games of football, they're Champions League winners, don't forget. They've won the championship a few years uh, for a few, t a few times. So they know how to win games like that. And Maurizio Pochettino has instilled in Tottenham Hotspur that you need to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with teams like that. You need to rough them up just as much as they're going to rough you up. And I can tell you this for now. If we didn't go in the way we played last night, they might well have rolled us over easily. But we showed them early on in that game that we are up for the fight. And then we let our talent, our skill, our creative ability get us ahead. Now, yes, I know we didn't keep it. We only drew in the end. But the atmosphere there was absolutely unbelievable. Chelsea fans were really behind their team. The Spurs fans were amazing as well. And once that first goal came, went in from Chelsea to make it 2-1, it felt a bit inevitable. And sometimes football does that. Sometimes it's so difficult to stop that from happening. And let's face it, Hazard's goal was absolutely incredible. In yesterday's game, Spurs got nine yellow cards. That is a Premier League record for one club. The only outfield player uh, who started not to get booked was Toby Alderweireld. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Spurs are no longer a soft touch. You try and mess with us, you try and say things in the press, you try and say you don't want us to win the league and you're going to do everything you can. You're if you allude to basically cheating, we are going to stand up to you and we're going to fight you. And yes, some of the things went too far. Absolutely right. I'm not going to condone, you know, putting someone, putting your hand on someone's face or kicking someone. But how many times have we seen Chelsea do that down the years? Diego Costa, you know, he thrives on that kind of football. And I bet when he got off that football pitch yesterday, there was no more of this, ah, poor me. I bet he actually respected the Spurs players a lot more because they knew how to fight fire with fire. And there will be more battles of the bridge to come. There will be more battles against Chelsea. And I think... They are battles that Spurs are going to start to win, both home and away, sooner rather than later. So the first thing I wanted to talk about, I felt we learned last night, Spurs no longer a soft touch, hard-edged. Second thing I want to talk about is on a similar vein, but it's Eric Dyer. For me, future Tottenham Hotspur captain. If he wants it, it's his. I know what people think. I think Harry Kane uh, is one of the vice captains already or certainly gets the armband when Hugo is injured uh, and Vertonghen's not playing. But I would say to Harry Kane, don't you worry about being captain of Spurs. You just worry about scoring goals. Don't add the pressure to him. I can tell you now, you give Eric Dyer the armband some way down, uh, down the line, maybe in five years' time, he would thrive on it. He is a leader. He doesn't have to be all loud when he's, uh, off, ca uh, when he's off the pitch. He doesn't have to be all boisterous to be a leader. He leads by example. Look at some of the vines going round of some of those tackles. He absolutely flung Chelsea players up in the air. He told them he was there physically, mentally. He imposed himself on the game. But not just that. He gets around the pitch. He's a fantastic passer of the ball. He's got a great touch. His reading of the game is unbelievable. He slots back into that centre-back role when uh, the full-backs have pushed up. He is, I think, along with Alderweireld, the absolute reason for our defensive solidity this season. And I would have him as my next Tottenham Hotspur captain. I really would. 
over Yan Vertonghen even. I, I love Yang, Yan, I do, and I especially think he's improved uh, immeasurably since Toby Alderweireld has come in and played alongside him. But for me, in terms of like the Brian Robson-esque type of leader, get, get Eric Dyer the armband when Hugo uh, isn't captain anymore, five years down the line, whatever. Hugo's a great captain for us, and I can't wait to watch him lifting trophies. But I just think Eric Dyer, you know, he, he didn't show me anything in that match that I didn't already know, but just the way that match turned out and the way he kind of led from the front, oh, it, was, it was so good to see. And I can't think of any performances from a Spurs team in my lifetime, really where they showed that much togetherness and that much grit. And like, it was just an old school London derby. It was an absolute pleasure to be in the ground, I have to say. And, you know, and I don't want to give Chelsea fans too much credit because you know, they're not my fans and I'm not a Chelsea fan and what have you. But the atmosphere, like I said, was unbelievable. They really got it going. It, it was really a pleasure to be there. So the second thing I wanted to talk about was Eric Dyer, but I got in some other stuff there. Third up, Moussa Dembele. Is he the best midfielder in the country? Jermaine Genus has done an article where he says he is. And I think his display yesterday, for me, I've heard some people say they don't think he played well. I disagree. You know, yeah, maybe he lost the ball once or twice, but the only reason you're complaining about that is because he never loses the ball. You know, yeah, maybe he sprayed a pass wrong, but he doesn't do that that often. He is just a ticker in the middle of the pitch. He keeps it ticking over all the time. And players can't get the ball off him. Now, to say, is he the best midfielder in the country? Maybe that's a step too far, but he's certainly now rising to the upper echelons. He's 28, absolutely in his prime. If he can stay fit for his next season, not get suspended too much, maybe keep his hands off people's faces, I think he can absolutely lead us to glory. An unbelievable footballer, making that £15 million we paid for him look an absolute steal at this point. Goodness only knows what he's worth uh, in this day and age. And also, you can just tell that he believes in himself more. A lot, that's the same with a lot of the players at Spurs. But he needed that belief. Pochettino's instilled it in him, told him you're the best player on the park or one of the best players on the park. And he believes in Pochettino. When Tim Sherwood told him that, you could just tell it didn't, you know, it was like he didn't really think about it, didn't really care. But now I think he loves that hunger. He likes having the Belgians around him as well. And just a fantastic player. I know, you know, he, he wasn't 10 out of 10 last night, but I think he was the epitome of everything that is good about Spurs yesterday as well. Starts everything off, gives it out to Ericsson. Some one-two touch stuff, lovely stuff we were playing in that first half. And then Dembele comes back to let you start again with it if we can't make that. If, you, if they can't make the chance that time, it always comes back to Dembele. Start again, switch the play, go again. Little balls in, get it back. Fantastic player, really love him. Uh, fourth thing I want to think about, uh, talk about in terms of what I felt we learned last night or what I saw, Maurizio Pochettino driving us on from the sidelines. How many times down the years have we had managers where people have complained that they haven't been aggressive enough on the sidelines, they haven't been back in their team, they haven't been getting behind the boys? Well, Pochettino, earlier this season, he did it when Dele Alli got in a bit of a scrap on the sidelines at White Hart Lane. He got right out there, pulled Dele Alli away. With the Danny Rose and Willian incident yesterday, he was just trying to do a similar thing. He was trying to get in the middle of them. But what you can tell from that is he's not just there, not involved in the game, sat in his, in his seat. He is living and breathing every part of it from the inside, the way he can't stop himself from storming on. And I'm telling you, Diego Simeone, the manager of Atletico Madrid, he's got that fire in him, in him as well. And I really rate him, I think he's excellent. And he's getting Atletico Madrid to the upper echelons of the game, the semi-finals of the Champions League. He's got them in a title fight again with uh, Barcelona and Real Madrid, despite having way less resources. And I'm telling you, Pochettino, Argentinian as well, cut from the same cloth. And there is no reason for me why that drive and that inner hunger can't drive Spurs to challenge again and again and to have a great run in the Champions League. You look at Atletico Madrid and you look at Spurs, I don't think there are that many um, things that aren't similar. I really don't. Similar budgets, similar bigger clubs uh, who got more money ahead of them, but teamwork, team ethic, drive, hunger, desire, and a couple of star names. For Atletico Madrid, if you ask me, Antoine Griezmann, unbelievable player, can win a game on his own. For me, Harry Kane at Spurs, Christian Eriksen at Spurs. It can happen. Atletico Madrid have had to sell some of their best players down the years. So have we. Now, I don't think we will. And I don't think many Atletico Madrid players will leave either. I think it's very similar. And I don't think many European teams are going to come and batter Spurs at White Hart Lane. I know Dortmund did this year, home and away. But we played a, we played a scratch reserve team. So, it be very interesting. Uh, anyway, fourth thing I want to talk about was how Pochettino has driven us on. Does it from the sidelines and his similarities with other great managers in the game, in this, in this case, Diego Simeone. It was a pleasure to see him 
just so pumped up and then good and calm in the press conference after. I love you, Maurizio Pochettino. I really do. Fantastic manager. Unbelievable. Fifth and final thing I want to talk about, just I don't want fans to be despondent. I know it's hard. I know we all lived the dream for a while. I know we believe, but just remember where we were just at the start of the season. All that, or in last preseason, all that deadwood we had. Paulinho, Adebayor, so many players that just weren't good enough, not only to play for our team, but to even buy into the philosophy. It's all changed. Honestly, tell me in the comments section below, how many of those players, not just in that team, but in the squad, do you honestly look at and think, they don't live and breathe Tottenham Hotspur? The only one that I think maybe some people would say is Bentaleb. But I actually think Bentaleb's been unlucky with injuries. Last season, he was everywhere for Spurs. He was my favourite player at the end of last season for Spurs. And I think if he gets a good pre-season, knuckles down, if Pochettino can get in his head and say, Nabil, if you knuckle down, then you can challenge those midfielders. There are going to be opportunities. Champions League games, League Cup games, Premier League games with injuries and suspensions. Showing right now, if Bentaleb was around, he'd be getting in the team now because of the suspensions we're going to have coming up. I just think... It's a fantastic time to be a Spurs fan. All those players are filled with desire. I think one or two may go, and I think players will be brought in, but Pochettino will not be bringing in big ego names, big players to rattle the uh, consistency or to ruin the, uh, the attitude in the squad. It's an incredibly exciting time. Don't be too despondent. Honestly, don't. I think we're going to get second place. I really do. I think... I think personally, you know, this may come back to bite me, but I think we'll beat Southampton. I think we'll beat Newcastle as well. We'll come second. And either way, we're guaranteed a third place finish. I know we all want to finish above Woolwich. We desperately do. And I think we deserve to. I hope we will. I really do. But either way, top three Champions League finish. No qualification to get in it. That means better players will automatically be able to come in. Because they'll say, oh, well, they're definitely in the Champions League. I'm not going to wait to see how their two-legged qualifier goes. We've never done that before. Just enjoy it. And when you get stick from opposition fans, try and take the piss out of you for the fact that, you, that Spurs bottled it. It was never ours to bottle. Leicester deserved it, and we have been unbelievable. The only reason those opposition fans are getting on our case, they're jealous. That's true. They are jealous. They see the talent. They see the future. They think, oh, God, I wish we had some of that. Even those big clubs, the Cities, the Uniteds, the Chelseas, they're like, oh, God, next season we're going to be in transition a little bit. We don't have any of that. And I can tell you for guaranteed sure, Woolwich fans are hating it. They are hating it at the moment because Spurs are better than them. And they're worried that we're going to be better than, than them for years to come. And they're worried they're going to stagnate. That's what the abuse is about. Don't worry about it. Enjoy it. Let it bounce off you because they are in fear. Anyway, guys, that's been the five things that I felt we learned from the uh, Chelsea game last night. Let me know what you thought in the comments box. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel on YouTube. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook, Spurred on TV. And come on, you Spurs. Keep believing in the boys. Come on. Hi guys, Barnby for Spurred On. I'm down the road from Stamford Bridge. We couldn't get any fan cams or do anything around there. It's just full of partying Chelsea fans. The dream is over.